There are literally thousands of social applications on iOS, but which one should you download? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and these are our top five social apps for iOS. I lost track of all the social applications I downloaded and deleted from my iOS devices years ago. New innovative ways to connect with people pop up every single month, and they're usually first to arrive on iOS. So where should you begin your search for the best social apps to install on your iPad and iPhone? Like I mentioned in the top 5 social apps for Android video yesterday, you should give all the official apps a go first, such as Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Most of those get the job done sufficiently well, but sometimes third-party clients take things to a new level. We've been around the block with dozens of social apps, and these are our favorite on iOS. When it comes to Twitter on iOS, there are third-party clients, and then there's Tweetbot. Others like Echophone, Tweetcaster, and Twitterific get the job done, but Tweetbot does it with the most class and style, and it has one of the broadest selections of embedded features to boot. It has support for popular read later services, URL shortening, third-party image and video uploads, and timeline sync. Above all, it's the cleanest, most polished UI and experience I've ever had on Twitter, period. Tweetbot 3 is available for $4.99, but you'll have to purchase the separate application for iPad, which is yet to be updated to match iOS 7 for another $4.99. If you're looking for a great Reddit client for iOS, there are tons of clients in the App Store, but there is only one you should bother with, Alien Blue. I've done most of my Reddit browsing from Android until last week. I took to Twitter to ask for iOS Reddit client recommendations, and I got my answer very quickly, with a unanimous recommendation for Alien Blue. And rightly so. I downloaded the free version, and just seconds later I knew I should go ahead and upgrade to the individual paid versions for iPhone and iPad, which are $3.99 each. The UI is laid out in a very clean and easy to navigate manner, and it brings some very helpful features to the Reddit experience you can't get from the web, such as a gallery view where you can view large thumbnails to quickly sift through and find the more interesting posts. Common threading is incredibly easy to follow, and overall, Alien Blue makes for one of the best Reddit experiences around. In fact, I prefer using Alien Blue from my iPad mini over the web from my MacBook. I included Buffer in my social apps for Android video yesterday because it's an application I use each and every day. But the iOS version, as expected, is packed with additional and very useful features. For instance, you can't create or edit posting schedules from the Android app. You can still buffer posts, but any editing to the schedule has to be done from the web. If you're using the iOS client, however, scheduling is built directly into the app. Other than that, they're practically the same, though they look a little different. For those unfamiliar with Buffer, it's a service which allows you to create posting schedules for multiple Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn accounts, as well as Google Plus pages. It's a must for anyone who regularly shares links and wants to casually space out their posts automatically. The Buffer app and service are free of charge, but you will need to upgrade to a premium account to unlock certain features, such as multiple posting schedules or additional accounts. I wanted to stay away from first-party applications in this list, but thanks to a recent release from Facebook, that was never going to happen. Yesterday, Facebook released a new way to view mobile Facebook for iOS users. It's called Paper, and it actually looks a lot more like a third-party client than something that actually came from Facebook. There are no saturated blue tones, and the app actually works quite well, surprisingly. It's almost entirely gesture-based, and it's incredibly fluid. The main view is your newsfeed, composed of the typical posts from your friends and the pages you follow or like. You can navigate this by swiping left or right on the bottom half of the page to scroll through posts, and dragging the thumbnail upwards to expand. Swiping upwards on the article preview will open the full article with a slick animation, and swiping it back down will minimize. From the main view, you can change sections by swiping left or right on the top half of the default page. These sections are essentially different topics of interest, and they can be edited by pulling the home page down and tapping Edit Sections. Best of all, you can disable autoplay on videos, and it has a read later support built in for Pocket, Instapaper, Pinboard, and Safari. Paper isn't perfect, but it is, by far, the best Facebook app to date. The last social app for iOS on our list may come as a bit of a surprise, Foursquare. I know, I know, the app and network isn't anything particularly amazing, it's been around for a while, but there's something you get from Foursquare that few other software companies provide. Quick support for up and coming platforms. I took a personal hiatus from Foursquare over two and a half years ago, and I only started using it again last week when I was testing a preview of the Foursquare app for Pebble. As far as the application itself goes, it does look very nice, and it's simple. For anything else, it wouldn't be worth using, but there are two reasons I've included Foursquare in this list. It's impressive how quick the company has made the application and how easy it is to check in somewhere, earn rewards, and give feedback. I also love using this app to find places my friends have gone. Yelp is also great for finding places to go, but Foursquare adds a hint of a personal touch not found on Yelp. 
Folks, that's gonna do it. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below and leave a comment if we missed any of your favorite social apps for iOS. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin. You can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.